Welcome, this is AP Physics Lecture on Kinematics. This is Projectile Motion Part 2. Here we're going to do some calculations. The starting example here, a missile is shot directly um, to the right off a 6 meter high cliff and hits a truck that is 145 meters far from the base of the cliff. What is the launch speed of the missile? Try this by yourself if you would like by pausing the video. Let's go over the solution. First of all, we want to look at the question mark and the question mark is VX not equals to question mark. The reason why is because the launch speed is the directly to the right. That's why it's VX not. Next, we want to do a list of variables. This is our variables. We know that X not Y not equals to zero because it's starting is zero. We know that the X or your delta X is 145 because that is the distance the truck is away from the cliff. You could write delta X here and delta Y here can be 60 uh, meters because that is how high. Again, we are taking it that the object right here is going to be um, zero zero that's why from here to here we can say it's 145 because this spot could be 145 comma zero and up here it would be zero comma 60 if you want to look at it in terms of a coordinate grid gravity here we would say a y is equal to negative g equals to negative 9.8. You're going to see it when we plug it in. All right, so our end goal here is to solve for VX naught. You should stumble across a dilemma. You have two unknowns. Your unknowns are here. These are your two unknowns. Therefore, you need two equations. The first equation is going to be solving for T. If you watch the part one, you should see how we set up to solve for T using this equation. So rearrange, and we're going to use that equation uh, to solve for um, the initial velocity in the x direction once we have t. All right, so I do some rearrangement. Again, again, this goes to zero, this goes to zero. That's how. I'm going to now input um, the negative g in here. That's why it becomes positive, right? So when you do the square root, the inside values are going to be positives. So it should be t equals to the square root 2 times 60 over 10. You should get t equals to 3.46 seconds. I round it here. Once you have the time component, please understand this is positive. Okay. Why? Because when you plug this in here, this is negative 9.8. This cancels out. The negative times the negative cancels out. So x equals to x naught plus vx naught t. Okay. This is the equation now. This is our linear equation that we're going to use to solve for v, Vx naught. So rearrange it by just dividing the t over because again, this goes to zero. Then you get that as your simplified version. So your initial velocity in the x direction is around 42 meters per second. That is how the object can achieve that. Next. Example one, this is also another typical problem. A ball is launched at an angle 37 degrees above the horizontal with an initial speed of 50 meters per second. They ask you to, do, to determine these three things. These are very unique. But please understand that when you, get, when you are given a theta here, right, an angle here equals to 37, you got to make sure you compute your your um, velocity component parts, okay? These are your component parts of velocity, all right? So we know that the velocity in the x direction is 40 meters per second, and we know in the y direction it is 30 meters per second. That is crucial because all the equations that we set up, remember, um, depends on the direction. Notice that all these questions refer to when the object hits the maximum height. The maximum height is right here at the maximum height. That is the reason why I block off the second half of it. This is 
um, you should notice the reason why we do this is so we can solve for certain variables easier. Notice we can solve for the max, uh, we can determine the maximum height the object reaches by using this equation. Okay? Plug everything in, rearrange, you should get your delta y equals to 45. The height is very important. Next, the reason why once you find the maximum height, the reason you need to do that first is that is the only way you can compute to get the time. Okay, The time it takes the object to reach the maximum height can be used by this linear equation. <coughs> Rearrange <coughs> and solve for t. T equals to v not y minus g. You get t equals to three seconds. Now, once you do this, you could find the the speed of the bot's maximum height, which is forty meters per second. And again, it never changes, right? The reason why this is the same, this is the same as this, is because a x equals to zero right there is no horizontal acceleration right but please understand that you need to be able to find the maximum height first and then the time that is always crucial next now it asks you um, to look at the time it takes the ball to return to the ground Okay. Here's the mathematics. Again, we set up this equation because this behaves right like a quadratic, a parabolic. It's a um, projectile. Setting things to equal to zero, and we can get for t. And here we saw that t equals to six seconds. That makes sense because originally, remember how we split it in half in the first part? We saw that it took three seconds for it to go here to here. And the fact that this is symmetrical in terms of the parabolic, three seconds going back down, if you add these two, it becomes six seconds. Please notice that the time for part D for the whole trip is just doubled the time to reach the highest point from part B. Part E, you could see this written in different ways on the exam. The total distance the ball travels, how far the ball travels, or what is the range of the ball. In short, it's asking for the same thing. It's asking for your delta y, and this is the equation that you use for the delta y. Please understand that this is now linear. This is your quadratic. And the reason why is because of the behavior of time. Here, it becomes linearly, you get rid of the t squared, is because you have a time component in here. Okay? Some things that you want to notice is that the projectile section has two types of launches. You have a launch um, like this from the ground up to a maximum height and coming back down. This is was our example one. And the horizontal launch was our example zero. And you'd see that its time behaves differently. Here, the time here will depend on your height and gravity why here when it's launched from the ground up bend back down it depends on your velocity in your y and gravity okay the reason why there is no delta y here is because it the delta y equals to zero it reaches its lowest point no it reaches the sa um the same point before and after okay the Y here is the same thing as the Y here. The horizontal launch. The reason why there is no V not Y is because the velocity in the Y direction is zero. Remember, it's drop from rest. Here's some mathematics to um, show you how both will behave. And we just show you that the second half of the launch looks like the horizontal launch. Okay. Because again, here, you can, if you just look at this half, it looks like the object is just being thrown off a cliff or a tower.
from rests. All right. Some things that you should notice that you should memorize for the multiple choice is that there is a pattern associated with the launch angle and it comes from the unit circle. Okay. At the top, uh, um, the two angles of launch that added up to 90 degrees will arrive at the same positioning. The greatest launch is achieved by, land, um, by launching at an angle of 45 degrees. The reason why is because sine of 45 degrees is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees. And I believe it is at one half. That should be right. Okay, let me just double check on my calculator. It should be one half. Because it's half of a, uh, it's half of one. So sine of forty five should be. No, sine of forty five is that. Well, what's cosine of forty five? To that. Let me make my mode is in degrees. Huh. That's interesting. Hmm. Sine of forty five is. <laughs> I'm wrong apparently. Sine of forty five is. Uh, both of these are equal to a zero point seven zero seven. Okay, huh, that's interesting. Sign of, oh, this is 45. Yeah, okay, 30, 40. Yeah, so what is sign? Oh, it's the square root, yeah. Okay, so just a couple of things for you to memorize, okay? Uh, if you look at the unit circle, this behaves like the unit circle, okay? All right. Please remember that the greatest range is launch achieved by launching the object at 45 degrees. The maximum height is achieved by launching it at 90 degrees. That means it is by straight up. And this is example two. This is uh, when a projectile is launched with a horizontal speed, but now it achieves a range. You now have a delta Y part. The first thing is always to compute the time, but here it's easy because they give you the delta x part because it says the range is 200 meters. So you can just plug that in to get to solve for time. Time is always important to get. B, next you're going to be asked to determine the height the projectile is to the fact that we have a time component, we can now plug it in. There's different equations you can use here. I use the quadratic version and I get 25 meters. Next, this is gonna be asking for the speed of the object. And again, the speed of the object, um, I'm just looking at your V here. And please understand here, you're gonna end up using your trig, okay? This is the horizontal velocity and this is the vertical velocity, okay? That is using Again, that imagining solving for a right triangle, right? You're solving for this part, okay? Next, here they give you the time. This problem gives you the time. They give you the initial speed and a theta value. But what is missing? Well, there it's missing your delta x. That's why the first question to ask is what is the range of the projectile, <clears throat> right? So, <clears throat> in this case, it's the same math as before because the um, time is five seconds, so it reaches 200 meters. This is like the previous problem, okay? So notice, it doesn't matter what they give you. They can either give you a time or they can give you your delta x. It, you're going to get the same answer either way. Next, here it says the object lands 25 meters above its initial height. So here the math is slightly a, li a little bit different. But is your delta x going to be the same? It should be, okay? But what I want you to do here is looking at the, um, at the time component, all right? Because the angle is the same, the initial speed is the same. Sh is the should the time be the same? All right, first of all, the time is the same. It's still five seconds. Here's the math to show it. Looking at the range though, how um, far it goes, it's the same, right? 
Why? Again, it's the same calculation as before. So even if the object lands above its certain height, the delta y, it doesn't matter. Example five. Here, again, you're just working backwards. So here, I'm just going to show you it. And the reason why it says maximum range okay, is when you let theta equals to 45. Okay. And we know its maximum height is going to be where delta y equals to 0. Here's the calculation. There's not much explaining for me to do here. So here, this is the same um, problem, but part D, it asks for the total time it takes. It's going to be longer, of course. It's doubled from before. If you take a look, it was 10 seconds here to reach its maximum height. So we know for the full path, we would just double it. Makes sense. 20. But the maximum range, though, it's actually not just doubled, right? It's four times. The reason why it's considered four times, <clears throat> if you take a look for the maximum range for your uh, your delta um, for your delta x, is because of the square term. That is the reason why. Okay, and that is your uh, your projectile's landing speed as well. Here's some example five. You would if you would like to take a look. And the key idea that we're trying to get you to understand is that just as a free fall problem, the vertical displacement is negative. This means that the minus sign will cancel out. Everyone knows this and for dropping objects in free fall and horizontal launch projectiles, most people ignore the minus sign. Okay, but so here there's no minus sign, okay, because there's a minus in here. They don't ever write it. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. All right. So same math from before. Okay. So again, the last uh, the last several problems um, are just very math heavy, and but it's there's not a lot of explanation. It's just a lot of chug and plug. What I need you to understand going into the AP exam is the two launch specials, the full motion of the projectile as well as when it falls halfway okay but again it's essentially this problem but just cut in half all right so you really only need up to this slide of information the rest is just there if you would like to get a, a math a stronger mathematical understanding of the projectiles okay but there you go